people welcome to this tutorial I'm going to explain you here how to start with Adobe Photoshop CC in very easy steps leave feedbacks in comments in case you find any mistake in pronunciation check the video description for the index of what is explained here Adobe Photoshop is a software leader in graphic and image editing Beside Lightroom or Photoshop Elements, Photoshop is the most professional one and the most general one that can be applied on images or photos or logos as well. First of all, let's create a new workspace. Go to File and then to New. The new window states how your new project must be. Decide its name on top. Decide then its sides through width and height in the middle. This size is referred to the white and blank workspace you are going to work on. Digit the correct value on the left and the measured unit on the right. You can set also the color resolution. Choose 16 or 32 bits. Choose to set your background in solid white or without any color, so with transparency. Then go to OK. Any empty space shown in your workspace is always represented through squares in white and grey. This means that there is nothing drawn in such space. The size of the workspace can be modified any time through the crop tool, the fifth icon in the tools panel. Click and drag an area. This selects the area of the workspace to keep. All the rest will be cut and deleted. To accept the crop done, just go to the OK symbol in the top right corner, otherwise just press Escape from your keyboard. There are two ways to fill your workspace. One is to generate the images and shapes. The other one is to open and edit images already existing. Let's open an image. Go to File and then to Open and then Browse. A new window will be opened to welcome it, beside your original workspace. Let's now see how to manage an image fully. At first, this image is totally one piece and a single object. When you will have more objects on your workspace, you will need the Layer window. Go to Window and tick on Layers. This will open this window if closed. In case you don't find windows in the future because closed, you can always open them through here. The Layers window shows you, for a single object on your workspace, a single layer, listed all here. The background in italic is simply the default layer created when you open the image. Double click on the lock icon on the right to unlock it, and so edit it in the future. To cut a copy and paste in Photoshop, just press Ctrl and X, Ctrl and C and Ctrl and V from your keyboard. However, this does work just if you have selected an area first. So let's select the image. Go on the left in the Tools panel. This contains all you need to edit and create in Photoshop. It is better to keep it always opened. Click on the second icon of the list, the Rectangular Marquee tool. Then just click and drag the whole image you have. The moving dash the line represents what you have actually selected. Now, through the keys explained before, you can go on cutting, copying or pasting. Just remember to have the layer selected in blue or you can't. Look at the layers window. If you paste more objects, more layers will be automatically created. So that, for each object, there is actually a layer that identifies it. To delete a layer, you need to right-click on it and go to Delete Layer. The object associated to it, represented through the image on the left, will be deleted with it. There are other ways to select parts of an image. If you right-click on a button in the Tools panel, you will see the other options related to a particular button. So, instead of the General Rectangle Marquee tool, you can choose to select an elliptical area, or a single row or column of pixels. More advanced are the lasso selection tools. These are selections made more through freehand. Lasso is totally freehand. Just hold your click and move your pointer to define the selection area. The lasso does close the area auto. The polygonal lasso tool defines a polygonal personalized area 
where a side is created whenever you click. Double click then to close the selection area. The magnetic lasso tool instead is more advanced. It creates anchors whenever you click and the selection area moves along edges of colors revealed by the image itself. Right click to close the area. With marquee and lasso tools the selected area can be moved any time. Just approach the pointer inside such area and click and drag to move it. The third button is used to make automated selections. Very good in case the areas to be selected are pretty complex to be made by hand. Quick selection tool is very awesome since it selects shapes in your image that are related somehow, like the particular shape revealed or the color changes. Mind that this selection may not work in case you have smoothness or gradients. Make sure to change the brush properties on top of your software where you see a number. You can change the diametrical size of the selection point and so on. To go on selecting and including new areas, make sure to go on clicking. In case you mistake a selection click, just press Ctrl and Z from your keyboard. This always undoes an action. Otherwise you can go to edit and undo. In case you want to undo more actions, just open the history window in the window section and just go backwards as you need. Magic Wand tool selection does the same of the quick selection, but the selection is not cumulative. So for each click you will have single selections only. Selections are very important in Photoshop. If you want to edit or apply any effect, these are applied only on the selected region of the selected layer. So there, if you use the copy and the paste command, the copied and pasted project is the selected area of the layer highlighted blue on the right. In fact, if the selection area does stay the same, but it's different the layer selected, you will paste in the end the part related to the layer selected at that moment. So, make sure to select the area and the layer interested before going on with any action. You can eventually select more than one single layer, just hold the control down and go on selected or deselecting the layers in the list. If more layers are selected, the editings are applied on all and just the layer selected. Mind that some actions, like the simple cut, can't be done in case you selected more than one layer. Keep in mind the smart object. This simply puts together two or more layers existing and treat it like a single layer. Just select such layers and right click on them and go to convert to smart object. An icon in a corner will remind you such created. It is particular the copy merged that you find in the section edit. This actually copies what is inside the selected region, without caring about the layer selected. It is copied what you see before the layers overlapped, so what you see on your screen. While working in your project, it is important to manage layers correctly. In the Layers window you can hide and show layers by clicking on the eye next to each layer. Remember that a hidden layer or object can be seen or either modified. It is treated like a non-existing object. Double click on a layer to rename it. Make sure to do it so that you remember the object that the layer is containing. Very important then is the order of the layers. This order does set the order of visibility between objects. If a layer is above another one, the first one is shown above the second one in your workspace. You can change such order by clicking on the layer and dragging it up and down. In the future you may want to lock a layer. A layer locked is a layer whose object can be seen but can be edited or moved in any way. To lock a layer, just select it and click on the lock icon right above. Let's see now how to create shapes and to manage objects first. Above the end button you find a rectangle button by default. If you right click on it, 
you have the full list of shapes that you can draw. Select one and just click and drag properly to draw such. Notice that such objects admit filling and stroke. I indicate it through the two icons above, next to shape. Click on such icons to change the colors of the filling and the stroke associated. You can then change thickness and size the way you like. New in Photoshop CC is the Dynamic Properties window. This opens auto when you draw shapes. This window describes it in full, such as stroke and filling color, gradients or patterns applied. You can edit fast the stroke angles as well. Choose your personalized color with the icon more on the right. Remember that the white rectangle with a red diagonal line means no color, so invisible or not present. Shapes created are represented in the layers window through a rectangle shape in a corner. Any kind of layer or shapes or pieces of images can be managed pretty easily. First of all, select the layer or layers you want to treat. This must be always done. You will often use the selection tools. While these are selected, start editing. If you want to move the object fast, simply hold the control down and drag the object. A rectangle will tell you the offsets applied. Then, if you want to scale, rotate or deform the object selected, you need to go to Edit and to Transform. Then choose between Scale, Rotate, Flip and so on. Remember that this is always applied on the layer or layer selected first. Confirm the transformation applied by accepting in the top right corner. While in any transformation function you can edit all through the bar on top, inserting the precise values. Keep in mind that you can keep the aspect ratio constant through this icon between W, Width and H, Height. Whenever you want to zoom in and out your workspace, you can use the zoom tool through the lens icon on the left. Otherwise, simply hold Alt down and use your mouse wheel. Whereas, if you want to move around your workspace, just use the end tool and drag with your mouse. Or just hold the space down and move. Very well, now let's save our project. Go to File and then to Save As. Choose the name of the file to save. Through Format, you choose how to save your work. Choose .png or .jpg if you want to render your image. For example, a background to use in YouTube. Keep in mind that the .png files do save transparency, which can be seen in your workspace with grey and white squares alternated. Whereas .jpg ones turn these transparent areas in white areas, so with total opacity. However, for .jpg files, you can choose the quality for the image rendered. The higher is the quality, the more sides the file will have. Save as .psd if you want to save your work as a Photoshop project file. This means that you are saving the whole list of layers, their order and all editings and the smart objects inside. This is made to modify your work in a second time. Very well, this is all to start with Photoshop CC. Watch the next video to get into image and photo editings in full or create a logo. Thanks for watching.